The Japanese archipelago consists of four main islands and hundreds of small islets lying adjacent to them. Less than 20% of the land is flat enough for farming or large settlement. The total area is almost the same as that of the British Isles. The population, however, is almost double. The four mountainous islands stretch through the northern hemisphere in the same latitudes as the Mediterranean Sea. In northern Honshu and here in Hokkaido, winter winds originating in Siberia to the northwest cause average temperatures to be well below freezing. In these northerly latitudes, the winter climate is harsh and life is often hard. The population is therefore not as heavy as in warmer areas. Agriculture is the main occupation, and in Hokkaido especially, fields are often large enough to permit the grazing of cattle. In the 1,200 miles south and west of Hokkaido, average winter temperatures become progressively more moderate. The terrain, though mountainous, is more habitable, particularly near the Pacific Ocean. Here, in southwestern Japan, the winters are relatively mild. The Japan current, similar in its effect to the Gulf Stream, flows north from the equator and warms both coasts. Summer temperatures are high and there is abundant rainfall, giving southwestern Japan a subtropical climate. Kyushu is noted for its luxuriant vegetation. In contrast, the west coast of Japan, particularly in north-central Honshu, is cool, damp, and somewhat inhospitable. The same Siberian winter winds that freeze northern Japan restrict agricultural production. Isolated by high mountains, the lowlands of the west coast are today as heavily populated as those of the Pacific. The central island of Honshu is the largest of the four. It's a land of great contrast of high mountains and flat plains, such as those of the Kanto district around Tokyo. East across Tokyo Bay lies the Boso Peninsula. Small farms and market gardens occupy the valleys and the lower hill slopes. Fruit, vegetable and flower growing is widespread throughout Japan, the greatest concentrations being close to the great cities. The Boso Peninsula is an outstanding market garden centre, the products going by road and rail to the markets of Tokyo. Japan has an excellent railway system. The main lines follow the coasts, thus serving the populous coastal lowlands and connecting the great cities. Looking at present-day Tokyo, it is hard to believe that over 80% of the city was destroyed by fire during the Second World War. Tokyo is today the world's largest city, and by almost all standards, as modern as any. Since the war, the drift of population has been from the rural areas to the large cities. This gravitation towards the urban centres has come about as a result of Japan's rapid expansion of industry and foreign trade.
the shift of population has been faster than the Japanese expected. New buildings continue to go up, transportation systems continue to expand, but still not quickly enough to keep pace with the growth of population. The problem is further complicated by the need to design buildings that are able to withstand the many earthquakes that plague Japan every year. Despite the impact of modernization, the country people still cling to their traditional customs and beliefs. And there are many rural areas where the way of life remains as it has been for hundreds of years, with few of the conveniences usually found in the 20th century. Many of these people have radios and read a daily newspaper, but opportunities to adopt modern technology have been limited. The job of repairing a country road or shoring up an embankment is still done in the old way. The only new building material is concrete. The women use woven baskets similar to those that have been used for centuries. But on such vital projects as the building of a new motorway between Tokyo and Osaka, Japan puts to work modern equipment and techniques. The remarkable growth of Japan's economy in recent years has been due, in part, to the sale of such equipment as this to nations throughout the Orient and to other countries in the Near and Middle East. This limits the amount of such equipment available for her own use. Modern power equipment will eventually be used throughout the island. For the present, however, it must be applied only to the most urgent needs. The motorway is replacing a heavily travelled main road. Even so, less than 10% of Japan's national roads are paved. If Japan's motor transport is to continue to grow, she must improve her roads. Japan is a densely populated country, but also a country lacking suitable land for cultivation. This dual problem is often solved in surprising ways, as here a modern power station in the middle of a rice field. The Japanese used to be known as copiers or imitators, but no longer. Today they are creative and inventive researchers. They have made important contributions to science and technology. The electron microscope developed by the Japanese made possible a major advance in the study of atomic particles. They are among the world's leaders in the design of complex equipment and machinery. In less than two decades, the Japanese have reached an industrial level equal to that of many Western countries. This achievement stems from their inborn creativeness, coupled with their capacity for hard work. And the Japanese are noted for their manual dexterity, the ability to make one's hands highly productive. It is on all her industrial skills that Japan's economy depends. She has learned to make and sell products that the world needs. With the income from these sales, she buys the things that she needs. Japan produces few of the raw materials that her economy demands. She grows practically no cotton, but she is one of the world's experts at converting raw cotton into clothing and other useful materials. The stability of Japan's economy, and in turn the prosperity of her people, is almost entirely dependent on her ability as a world trader. Although she has few natural resources, she does have the great resource of her people, for it is the skill and industry of her people that have brought Japan into world prominence. Within a period of 100 years, Japan has changed from a feudal society based largely on agriculture to a democracy dependent almost entirely on industry. She has emerged from the crushing defeat of the Second World War to become an economic and political power in today's international affairs.
But Japan still has many problems to solve. Her cities, like Tokyo, are among the most modern in the world. But many of her country people are still living in the past. She has created an industrial economy that is providing an abundance she never knew before. But to maintain that economy, she must continue to compete successfully in world markets. 